that's the planet I started on. You have the selection of any of the rest of them. Okay. <laughs> but you are. We could pick a different planet. <laughs> well, you'll have to when you play my creature. Yeah, that's creature true. Stage. Alrighty, maybe I'll send out another one. Real quick. See how things are going. See if we've got some people come by. <laughs> Hi, Possibility. How are you doing? <laughs> All right. Maybe it could just be you and I hanging out. How's everybody doing? Everybody ready for Christmas? I know I am. Right now, I got me some Lindemann's Fambois right here, which is like my... Um, <laughs> it's barely beer, but man, is it good. <laughs> I think it's like four and a half ABB, something like that. But, okay, so we're gonna play Spore today because pumping them jams, shucking the clams all night long. Yeah. All right, we need to pick a star. Oh no, that one that already has something. Mm, what planet do we want? Well, there's an Earth-like one, there's a purple one, mostly ocean. Yeah, let's go here. Yeah. The cell stage. Duh. Hmm. Let's be herbivores. Why not? Nothing or theme. I don't know. We get to start. We get to start being herbivore. All right. Forward. Hearns. Nah, we need a better name than that. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, no. This 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 game is great. No, we're gonna say. Hmm. Imagine a dog world. <laughs> all you, all you C team D and D nerds will get that one. Woo. All right. Here we go. Radiation. Ooh, look at our beautiful planet that we're gonna obliterate. <laughs> ah, sorry, possibility. Sorry it's got issues. Yeah, technology is great until it doesn't work. All right, we're going to seed the primordial soup here. This is gonna be great. Alrighty. And suddenly I'm born from a rock. Yeah, I get it. Okay, progress bar. DNA points. Oh, that'd be great. 
you could just evolve by, you know, DNAing. Eat it. Yeah. All right. So the reason I pick Spore for today's Drink and Think has to do with microbes and myths. The reason I'm talking about microbes and myths is that I've been seeing sort of a lot of things on social media and other things where are not quite right. There's a lot of sort of misconceptions about how um, microbiology works. So we're going to have a little um, lesson in evolution today after I get more of these. I find how it's terribly convenient that all of our plants are in perfect bite-sized form. <laughs> I curse the name Greyhound. Yes, he is adorable. That's okay, bye possibility. Still love you anyway. Oh no, don't bite me. So, reason we're going to have an evolution me uh, lesson is that, um, okay, other cells are finding new parts. All right. I no, oh no. Well, too bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if we talk about microbiology, microbiology traditionally, ah, don't bite me. That is so rude. Uh, it's traditionally the study of microorganisms, very small organisms, uh, bacteria and fungi. But what if I don't want to mate yet? What if I want to get bigger? Don't tell me what to do, game. <laughs> um, now, I saw some sorts of uh, ideas where people think that bacteria and fungus are the same thing. Oh no, run. Oh no, oh no, I'm in trouble. No, please don't eat me. Ah! Run, buddy, run. Yeah, you're big enough, you're fast enough. Go away. Go away. Go away. I don't need your garbage. Run. Yeah, I definitely I definitely need to get some some better weapons here. Nine. Um so as I said before, if I, when I'm not trying to run away, is bacteria and fungus are not the same thing. Um Actually, bacteria and fungus are about as different as a human being is to a tree. <laughs> yes, behold the harsh reality of nature. Wouldn't it be interesting if you could just, you know, like, um, just say nice things to someone and then all of a sudden you just popped out an egg? Like, that would be, like, really convenient. <laughs> this is all that's involved in mating process. Okay, we need we need spikes, guys. Okay, where should we put our spikes? Maybe in the back, so no one can can get us in the back. All right, I think I think our eye stalks are pretty good. Hmm, let's see. Or do we need bigger eyes? <laughs> Just three eyes. Oh, binocular vision. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think that's pretty good for now. Wish we could get more swimming. Well, name my species. What should I name my species? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we'll just name it after booze. Uh, we'll just name you Herbie for now. So, when we talk about, all right, so where do I go? So I go back to play, okay. So when we talk about evolution and we talk about life on earth, it is in three major categories or domains. There are archaea and there are bacteria and there are eukarya. So, Eukarya is the group that we're in. So that's anything 
that is considered a more complicated organism, but basically what that means is, is that you have, so maybe if I go back to basics, everyone has, is made up of cells. So all organisms are made up of cells and within those cells, if you think of it as a room, you know, there can be different compartments. So, in a eukaryotic organism or eukarya, they have a nucleus, which is where all the genetic material is kept. Your mo and unless you're a virus, it will be DNA. And so think of that as like the bedroom or the control center. And then you will have other organelles or compartments or rooms inside those cells. And so if you're a multicellular organism, like a human, you have different cells that do different things. You've got your skin cells and your blood cells and all those other stuff. But even very small organisms, so for example, like a yeast, which we use to make beer and bread and all that other stuff, they are also eukaryotes. They um, have uh, their DNA is in a nucleus, it's in a special compartment. But they only are made of one cell instead of multiple ones. Now you can, if you are a bacteria, you can also be very small, like a yeast, but you do not have separate compartments within your cell. You just have basically one big room that has all of the furniture. <laughs> Oh no, these guys are so big. Oh look, this is a diatom right here. Yeah. Diatoms, they live in fresh water. So right now in Spore, we would be what I would consider a zooplankton. Ooh, we're also finding meteorites. Ooh, ooh, nice. I got a thing. I don't know what it is, but I got it. And so, we would be considered a zooplankton, so more like a tiny animal. Now we are an herbivore. Now some zooplankton can produce their own food using photosynthesis, just like plants do. And But they still move around and they sometimes still eat, so they're kind of like an almost animal. They're kind of like a hybrid between the two. So ones which photosynthesize are considered phytoplankton, so phyto means, you know, light light or plant so that's why I'm the drunk phytologist I'm a plant scientist so phyto is plant but they still swim around like our little guy here um, you can also have zooplankton which are like little animals and so they also will have a single cell with different compartments and will eat other animals instead meat and whatnot and so those guys also fall into the kingdom of Eukarya. However, they are still small. Like we can't really see them without a microscope. So some of the m sort of, I would say confusing things that people see sometimes. Oh no, I'm trapped, oh no. Please don't hurt me. All right, maybe I should I should mate. Oh, my love, where are you, my love? I feel like you. I feel like the bigger one should be the female. Just my sexual dimorphism. <laughs> Just personally. Hmm. All right. I still think we need more speed. Yes, additional speed is needed. Hmm. Maybe. No, then we can't eat. No, that won't work. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of sort of microbiology and infectious disease um, and how 
for a long time, we used to think that sickness was not caused by germs, but was caused by bad air. And so this was called miasmatism. And if you want to learn sort of more about that, um, I would suggest listening to um, uh, This Podcast Will Kill You. <laughs> It's a, a great podcast by Aaron and Aaron. Um, they are both uh, women scientists like myself, but they study epidemiology. Um, and they talk a lot about the history of how we dealt with infectious disease in the past. And so when there was, there were two different major theories about what caused infectious disease. There was germ theory, which is that something we couldn't see was an infectious agent, which we find nowadays is the case. And we have antibiotics and medicine that help take care of that. Um, but then there was also the uh, miasmatism theory, which was that it was bad air or foul smelling air and that if you were overcrowded and did not have enough ventilation, like that was what was going to kill you. And that did have something to do with the spread of disease, but it was more of a coincidence than anything. Um, so we overall when it comes to microbiology we're finding more and more how important microbes are for our daily lives um most of your body is made up by microbes um, inside and outside which help you digest food they help your skin stay healthy they help remove particulates and nasty things from the insides of your lungs and different lining and tissue. And the biggest thing they help do is sort of protect you from bad pathogens by outcompeting them or outcrowding them or sometimes straight up killing them. Um, so there are certain things which are important, you know, like wash your hands before you eat, um, don't use, overuse hand sanitizer because that will, is not good for your skin or your microbes. But of course you don't want to, you know, not wash your hands because then you can spread other diseases and stuff. And so it's a bit of a balance and we're learning more about it all the time. Um, a great book if you want to learn about what we call the microbiome is basically the whole sort of ecology and please don't hurt me ah, and function of different microbes within our bodies and in the environment is a book by Ed Young called I Contain Multitudes and it's a fascinating read um, I would suggest it for anybody it's easy to understand um, without uh, having to, you know, have a microbiology degree like me. Oh no, I'm gonna die, guys. No! Eee, no! Run, buddy, run! Oh, I'm in big trouble. I'm in real big trouble. No, don't stop to eat, bud. Don't stop to eat. He's going to kill you. He's going to kill you. No. Run. Nature is a harsh and, and not friendly place. Oh boy. Rip. I know. No, come on, bud. All right. So yeah, so I saw some stuff earlier this week when someone was saying, where someone was asking me some questions, which was fine. Um, and I am happy to answer any at all on that if fungus and microbes were the same thing. And fungus are actually more closely related to animals. They are in the eukarya um, group, like I've mentioned before. Um, bacteria are in their own group, um, unique to them. Ooh, no. 
People are electrocuting me. Man, this place is unfriendly. Um, poison. Run, 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 run. Um, <clears throat> and so. Oh no! Nine! No! Run! Sorry, I say nine every once in a while because I drop into German because I'm weird. Um. Run, buddy, run. I thought we were fast enough, but I was wrong. Oh no. Our little zooplankton friend is, oh, he's expired, no. Oh, I messed up, guys. I kid him. I kid him dead. Okay. So, overall, when it comes to uh, microbes, the ones we know the most about are the ones that make us sick. I'm sure that's not stunning to anybody. Um, but we don't really know a lot about the ones that we depend on. Um, we also are finding more and more that a lot of what you would consider bad bacteria aren't necessarily bad, it's sort of context dependent. So like for example, one of the, mi the microbe I work on is what we call an opportunistic pathogen. So the idea is, is that it only is harmful to specifically plants um, in certain circumstances and under certain special conditions. And it's not really harmful to all plants either. It really, it's everyone's favorite answer. It depends. Um, and so a lot of um, and one of the reasons, sorry I got off topic, one of the reasons that I was answering questions for someone is that they were having problems with a systemic fungal infection. Now, there are lots of nasty fungal pathogens. Um, those are most of, if you've ever heard of a blight. So the late potato blight, which caused the famine in Ireland um, a long time ago was caused by a fungus um, and they are the most tend to be the most deadly pathogens that plants have to deal with and the ones that we worry about the most when we're thinking about crops um, whoa that guy's like growing eyes and I don't like it oh gosh no all right, let's see, we call a mate. Yeah, we call a mate. Where are we going? Hello. So obviously these protists are going through sexual reproduction, even though it just involves a smooch, but okay. <laughs> so there are also some certain, um, so fungal infections don't happen in humans that much. Um, unless you are immunocompromised. And so what I mean by immunocompromised is that, see, we need additional speed. Speed. The need for speed. So maybe we'll put another spike. Spike right there. The need for speed. Yeah. That's better. All right. So... Those tend to, because fungus tend to grow very slowly, um, if you get like a yeast infection or something like that, that usually happens because your normal bacteria um, have gotten unbalanced and the yeast is now able to grow where it would not be able to compete um, because bacteria tend to grow faster than fungus do and they would eat up the resources. It also has to do with the pH in your body, which is how acidic or how basic something is. So if you think about things you eat and stuff, a lemon would be very acidic, you know, versus something like, you know, milk is more basic. I know. Now I can't find food, and there's these big, big, big scary things in the background. I'm so scared. Look, shells. Can I have these? No? Okay, fine. Well, that's a bummer. Uh, 
Um, so there are also, so when we also talking about microbiology, this includes virology, so viruses. Um, the world's biggest virus that we know of, I will say that because who knows, we're discovering new ones all the time, um, is the size of a period on a piece of paper versus there are other viruses which are so itty bitty tiny tiny that we can't see them without the most powerful microscopes. Um, there's also quite a bit of, I will say, debate on whether viruses are alive or not. Um, and the reason for that is because they are they wouldn't necessarily be considered more complicated because they cannot reproduce on their own. They have to have some sort of host and they usually have to take things from that host or use the machinery. And oh, that guy is big and please don't hurt me. Yeah. Man, I thought I was going to be so much faster. Now I'm not as fast as I want to be. If I made an error, I might have made a grievous error in judgment, guys. Um, so, because by the strictest definition, a virus cannot reproduce by itself without having a host, they say it is not alive. The thing is, is there are plenty of more complicated organisms, we'll say, um, plants, animals, which are also parasites, which cannot reproduce without a host, but they're alive. So I guess it depends on how you want to think about it. Um, and on the strictest amount of the definition, you decide what you think. Um, I just try to have all the information out there. All right. What else? So, oh, I mentioned the different domains of living things earlier. Um, archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. Archaea is actually, are also microbes. Leave me alone. Go away, you weird mouth guy. Go eat something else. Someone else. Anybody, I don't care. Go fight that guy. Yeah, he was distracted. Good job. Yay. Now something else is chasing me. Excellent. Uh, so archaea, actually, we initially thought they were bacteria and then figured out, oh, no, they are way, way different. Um, because they can live in very, very harsh environments. Like, they found some archaea in the sulfur vents in the bottom of the ocean under intense pressure and intense heat. Um, they've also found them in lakes where nothing else lives because it is way too acidic or way too basic. They're also strange shapes. There was one they found which looks like almost like a square. It's almost completely flat. And yet would still kind of look like a bacteria but when they looked at the dna it actually was more closely related to eukarya like plants and animals and fungus and protists like what we are playing so right now i am a protist which is like a tiny animal or tiny almost animal <laughs> almost plant almost animal depending um yeah Oh, I also have seen uh, certain, I would say, terminology things, uh, which can be really confusing. Um, I really hate the term algae. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 guys. Oh, <gasps> I have a tiny brain. <laughs> I am on the path to sentience. All right. Okay, swimming in sludge. Rule the pool. Evolve legs. I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, I have an eye. Sure, why not? I 
involved. Oh my. Let's get some legs, guys. <laughs> I look so weird. <laughs> oh boy. Well, that looked weird for a second. All right. Do we need the need for speed? Thunder calf. Why is there thunder in that calf? I don't know. There might be. Maybe just one leg. Wow, I'm weird. Oh, I love it. See, this is what happens in sport. Everybody does this, where you just have the weirdest like critter ever. Oh no, oh no. Yeah, there we go. Aw, oh, yeah. <laughs> the weirdest derpin dinosaur you ever did see. Huh. We need a better mouth, though. Oh no, they won't give me bigger wings, guys. Oh no. Well, that's just rude, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Charming. <laughs> yeah, we need to get a different color. We need to get a better color. Hmm, since we're an herbivore, maybe we want to blend in. I like the stripes. I do. Oh, whoa. Sorry. It's doing a weird thing. Please, computer, don't die on me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Derp, look at <laughs> Derp Ladocus. Yes. Yes, Derp. Herbie, I love you. I'll love you forever. Yeah, we're totally going with this. This looks so bad, and I love it. <laughs> yes, we're gonna go on land. Oh boy. Sorry. Spore is not necessarily playing well with my computer. Yee, good grief. All right. Well, let's see if this fixes itself. All right, bud. Go conquer. <laughs> See, at least this is appropriate. At least Spore did a good job on that there are plants on land before there are animals, because that is how it happens. The race to evolve has begun. Oh, no. Okay. There we go. Okay. I know. <laughs> it's so derby and I love it. Oh, this is great. All right, well, we need to find some food. We're also going to have to find ourselves some real wings. All right. Is it still, like, clipping out weird? I hope not. What is this? Hey, I can get arms. Yay. What if I just don't want to mate yet? I just got born. Gosh. Pushy. Man, everybody's pushy. All right. Well, I do want to ask um, Napalm if you've got any uh, microbe questions or things you were ever confused about or concerns I would be happy to answer them 
See, I'll never have to go anywhere. Oh my god. Sick. <laughs> Too bad he's super, somebody's super into me. Yes. Okay, good grief. Fine. Fine. My family. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Let us go somewhere else. Up over the hill. Hello. Ah, this is so dumb. That's great. Yay. We can be great friends. Yay. Here we go. Yes, you are correct. Antibiotics do wreak all sorts of havoc. So one of the reasons, and there's sort of some history behind that, that antibiotics were overused is when penicillin was first discovered, um, basically what happened is they prescribed it for everything. Like, because it was like a miracle drug because anytime anyone got sick um and if you had surgery about 50 percent of anyone who got surgery would just die because of infection and there were a few doctors and medical people who took the time and this was when they were first figuring out germ theory yes um figuring out germ theory um, that if you just were very good about your hygiene practices, you could avoid a lot of it. But because antibiotics was so easy and it was just sort of this like miracle drug, um, they prescribed it for everything. You could get penicillin over the counter at the grocery store. Like it was absurd. But what would happen is no one knew how much to take. They'd take too much. They'd take too little. They didn't take it long enough. And then that those bacteria would develop resistance. So basically antibiotics should be moved towards a sort of a last resort for most infections. Um, I'm sorry, I can't do the siren song. I would like to talk to you though. Um, I know you want to be friends with me, but I can't sing right now. Um, so this sort of uh, this sort of overuse led to very early um, resistance. So basically, most antibiotics um, will target different necessary parts of the um, bacterial cell wall or something about how the bacteria grows but usually it just has to have a small mutation uh, before it will become either partly tolerant or resistant to that oops, I'm stuck, to infection and so the superbugs kind of resulted from somebody is there were bacteria which were resistant and then they didn't work so um, we'll say the typical sort of like a little dog in the it's you and me pals aren't you Chester yes it kind of is um, so basically what had happened was is that so penicillin stopped working. So what they did was is that they would prescribe another antibiotic. And then that one worked great. So then it was the, oh, well, we'll just prescribe that all the time. And now they're resistant to those antibiotics. And then it just goes greater and greater and greater. So the thing is, is that usually... Um, so usually when you get sort of antibiotics, 
generally speaking. Ooh, arms. And we'll get rid of those. So usually when you get antibiotics, bacteria don't sort of become resistant. It is like, it's not like if, you know, a person takes a little, a low dose of poison and eventually now they can drink that poison and not die. It's more of the, you have an entire population of bacteria and then you kill all the ones which are susceptible to the antibiotic. And then the only ones which are left are the ones which are resistant. And because those are the ones which are, you know, resistant now, don't worry, I'll get you a mouth. Oh no. Yeah, we need to make this guy smaller. Maybe we'll be more like a parrot. Um, so now the only ones that are left are the ones which are uh, resistant. And so, oh no. So basically you've wiped out all the competition. And so when you wipe out all of that competition, now any of those bacteria, there are none left which are susceptible. Now they're all resistant. So it can still happen, it can still occur, but if you are smart about your antibiotic use and when you're using it, it can be avoided for sure. Um, so most of the time, uh, another problem that I've noticed that some people are having is that, say for example, someone comes to the doctor because they have a cold and they're like, I want a Z-Pak, I want antibiotics. And the doctor's like, no, I'm not going to give you antibiotics. You don't need it because an antibiotic only deals, the caveman I live with had an infection that was resistant to all the new stuff. Yep, old school antibiotic, mm -hmm. basically the same thing. And that's, so that's kind of, especially when you're in the hospital, you're more likely to run into strains which are resistant to multiple things just because you're in an environment where lots of people are sick. And so it's a good thing that you're there because then you're able to get treated, but then it's a bad thing because there are people who are sick around you and may have these resistant strains. So yeah, it can definitely be a huge problem. Uh, so certain old school methods are coming back. Um, I heard of one which is pretty, which I thought was very interesting that they did when penicillin was first seen as a problem for resistance and it's called bacterial competition. Yes. You do want to push back on the doctors. Uh, so like some doctors are like, oh, we'll just throw antibiotics at it, it's fine. And other doctors, they will have problems where people are like, well, I just want an antibiotic. So instead they'll just go to the clinic and the clinic will be like, okay, fine. We'll just give you what you want. And that is a bad idea, especially because antibiotics target bacteria. They do not target viruses. Um, and so that's another sort of misnomer is that bacteria and viruses are the same thing and they also could not be more different. Um, the only thing they have in common is they're small. <laughs> and they make you sick sometimes. So there is a push for there used to be more work on what we call an antimicrobial, which is if you are already sick, you know, a way to fight it off. And those were the antibiotics and they worked really great and then everyone loved them. Um, but there's also this old school technique which worked great and it was called bacterial competition. And the idea was is that you would treat someone with 
natural bacteria that are found on your body, but a lot of it, and they would outcompete the pathogen. Um, or kill the pathogen. The idea is called, um, and it's used in conservation sometimes and in nature when we have pathogens on plants, as a biocontrol mechanism. And so that's that we will add kind of the enemy of my enemies, my friend. Um, soil bacteria um, is where soil fungus and a soil bacteria are where we get a lot of our antibiotics. And they try to kill one another <laughs> a lot. What is this? I'm confused. So they try to uh, kill one another a lot. And so uh, because of that, you can actually use that to your advantage. Um, so the bacteria that I study, agrobacterium, which causes tumors on plants, there are non-tumorogenic strains, so ones which don't cause tumors, that will kill the ones that cause tumors. And so that is a biocontrol method. So you can treat a tree which is forming tumors with this other um, non-harmful strain, and that non-harmful strain will kill the bad bacteria for you. So that's one of the reasons that there are certain bacteria on your body that will protect you from bad things. Um, so just kind of like with anything, it's kind of a balance, you know. Um, we're finding more and more that uh, gut issues are not so much from, is one part diet, but also one part your microbes. And that if you have a certain diet, you can promote growth of the good microbes in your gut and if you have a not so great diet you promote bad microbes in your gut um oh these are my friends these are the ones i wanted to make friends with yes please yes we will be great friends yes i read recently they're not allowing kids to play in the dirt could be causing kids to have a weaker immune system. Yes, you are correct, because they are missing out on microbes. The thing is, is when you are, so if we think of it this way, so there, when you're first born, you get populated with microbes from your mom. And you also get populated with microbes from your environment. As a baby, you have some of the antibodies and different immunities that your mom has while your new immune system is developing. So it's almost like an extra layer of protection. So when kids are really little, you know, maybe as a toddler age, you know, up to like four or five, it's a good idea to have them get exposed to a lot of things because that will help them develop a very strong immune system and a lot of adaptive immunity to lots of things. Um, we were seeing, a lot of people were worried like, oh, it's our diets and that's the reason that we have more allergies. And it actually has to do with not letting kids play outside and not letting them be in the dirt and not letting them, you know, be exposed to all these different things to help develop their immune system and improve their immune system. Because they are missing out on all those different microbes. Because they have added protection um, when they are little. There's also some research that's suggesting that it is becoming a problem and why allergies are higher and sickness are, is higher is that there are, are kids that are being born via c-section instead of being born naturally through the birth canal because if you are born through vaginal birth you get covered in your mom's microbes as you are born versus that does not happen if you are taken out via C-section. Now, I understand that is unavoidable in some cases. However, 
it is becoming more of a reality where some people will just say, oh, I just want a C-section, you know, and don't bother with trying to give natural vaginal birth. So that's part of the issue as well. And it has become more prevalent in, um, I will say, developed countries um, where you have that option and have that medical option. Um, so what else? What are some other good things to talk about? Ah, da, 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 da. Also, vaccines. So, vaccines work great. Everyone should get vaccinated. Um, also, if you're going to be going somewhere, like out of the country, you should get a booster. And the reason is a lot of the vaccines are only good for when you are young and but that's when you're most likely to get exposed so that's why you don't have you know boosters until like later but it is a really good idea to get a booster because you're basically helping your immune system help you man i'm still getting some weird stuff going on so all these parents who use the antibacterial wipes before the kids touch anything that's not good you are correct they should quit that too much washing your hands is fine washing before you eat is fine washing before you go to the bathroom is fine but constantly putting on hand sanitizer constantly putting on antibacterial wipes everywhere is not good you know our bodies were you know evolved or created whatever you believe to adapt to our environment and to adapt to the world around us so that's natural that's fine we're we're supposed to deal with that it's part of how our immune system works it's how our immune system adapts um so being obsessed with being super clean all the time is not actually giving you uh any good benefits it's actually probably more harmful than good so the best suggestions i can make when it comes to things is that if you are not feeling well, more often than not, it is going to be a virus. And yeah, curious about the debate on whether viruses are alive. Yeah, that's been a very, that's been a long debate. That has been a very long debate on whether viruses are alive or not. The idea was is that, so, they are, viruses tend to be very simple. They are made up of some sort of genetic material, RNA or DNA, and they are also covered in some sort of protein uh, casing. Yes, are we great friends now? You're not going to hurt me now? That'd be great. Thank you. All right, so they're covered in some sort of protein casing and they need to infect a host cell, either insert the genetic material in some way or um, they need to be engulfed by the host cell and then they need a host to reproduce and make more of themselves. So the idea is, is because they are not autonomous, yes, so it's kind of, yeah, it's clearly a different kind of thing than other types of parasites, right? So, yeah, so you wonder about the definition. So it might be that, you know, as I said, the debate is, so for example, the parasite which causes malaria is a protozoan, like a protist, like what we were when we were in the cell stage of spore but it requires a host to survive. It cannot reproduce on its own. So by that definition, it would not be alive, but it's considered alive. So, and the reason that they don't really want to change the definition is there are um, such things as um, moving, I will say genetic material 
They're called transposons, and it's basically DNA molecules which will invade an organism's genome to reproduce. So if you said it was anything, then you'd say, well, those were alive. Well, it's like, well, not really. You know, because, you know, it's just a molecule. So I'm not sure if there is a good answer, you know. I'm not sure, you know, if we are really sure on, like, if that should be alive or not, because... People who work on viruses, you know, would tend to argue that, yes, they are alive because they behave like other parasites or pathogens do. They're just really, really small. But then it's the, okay, how far do you go? Um, because otherwise it would basically mean that it's the, well, you know, next to just anything that's a combination of multiple molecules or a more complicated molecule would be alive, you know, and that's not really true. Um, so it's also a little bit of the argument of when people wonder, you know, is there life on other planets? And so most of the time people are thinking of sentient life, like something like a human I think it's very likely that there is life on other planets. Now, is it like us? Probably not, you know. It's most likely going to be like a bacteria. It's most likely going to be, you know, a form of microbe because there are way more microbes than there are us. And they are also very successful. Um, because they can grow basically anywhere under any sort of condition or um, any on very little food, no food. You know, they can eat things we can't, you know, even conceive of eating. So because of that, you know, our thing, is it going to be how we think it's going to be? You know, probably not. But... Is there other, like, life out there by the strict definition? Yeah, I think. I think so. There's plenty of planets which have the right. I hope it would be wildly different. Yeah, I do too. I hope it's way different. It's a completely different planet. It's a completely different place. Completely different history. Um, for a long time, we were convinced that everything... Um, so, that everything was carbon-based life. So from what we can tell, everything that is alive or we'll say maybe life adjacent um, when it comes to, uh, you know, life on Earth, we thought it would be based off of carbon. And then at the bottom of the ocean, we discovered something which is main structural molecule is arsenic and not carbon. And it's an archaea. Some of those very strange microbes I told you about before. So it's very possible that life somewhere else could be completely different. And I think that would be amazing. All right. What should we look like now? I still like the bird look. Too expensive. Speed, level one. Can I remove the leg? I get a different leg. There we go. Yeah, more muscly. <laughs> yes, I have seen that too. I've seen theories on silicon-based life as well. Um, just because of you know, different rules that we see on the periodic table where it's like, well, you know, this is where carbon is and this is where silicon is. And it is most likely, more likely able to, oh, let's see if I can do this. Ooh, no. Um, because silicon can bind to so many different things that 
<laughs> that the thought was is that okay it would have to have similar sort of um, be similar to carbon um, because carbon's such a good building block because it can bind to four different molecules at once um, and so the thought was is that okay well we would have to have another molecule that could also make a lot of different bonds at once and silicon sort of fits the bill um, but if and if life has taught me anything, <laughs> as a biologist, I've found that most of the time I am really wrong. <laughs> yeah, you really just need something that can form complex molecules. You're absolutely right. So that's one of the reasons nitrogen, um, which can form five different bonds at once, is very common. Um, uh, sort of, well, I know, sulfur can do that. Um, so your, your things that you see the most are phosphorus, are nitrogen, are sulfur, oxygen, and then of course hydrogens, which come into things, even though hydrogen can only form one bond, but they get made to a lot of things. Ah, <sighs> I don't know. Let's see. Do we want to get some different eyes? Yeah, but these eyes are boring. Yeah, we don't want any boring eyes, no. Maybe we'll make our arms longer. Yeah. Nine. <laughs> I still need my hands. Yes, we're totally going to have a very nice bird person. <laughs> Yeah, most discoveries are about being very wrong. I think the most interesting things I've found throughout my whole PhD is what I was completely wrong about. Um, <laughs> I've, I've usually had to say that to my students because um, my students are like, man, this isn't working and this didn't turn out the way I wanted to. And then I got to tell them, I'm like, well, I'm like, my original hypothesis, my original project ended up being completely wrong in every way. <laughs> And I had to redo it and think about it and do it completely different and go in a completely different direction. And that's just how it goes sometimes. It was great. And so, yeah. It can be, you know, frustrating and fun. But that's also what makes life interesting that's why I, that's why that's my my form of magic you know the magic does exist because you get reminded quite often you still want to be friends bud yeah <laughs> hey oh well thank you cookie mom yeah, no, I've never heard Eureka either. <laughs> I, I, I normally hear like, what is happening? I don't understand. <laughs> like, wow, that's weird. I'm sorry, bud, I can only sing like once. I need a better mouth. I know, I can't sing multiple times. It won't let me. I know. I swear we will be better friends later, I promise, I swear. <laughs> but yeah usually the best discoveries are the oh that's weird um i always like telling the story about how most people didn't real like normally it's funny things and simple things uh penicillin initially came from contaminated plates someone messed up and made it wrong and didn't wasn't careful about it and a bunch of mold grew on the plates and they're like, ah, oh, man, I'm gonna have to toss these out. But then they, what? Because they're like, my bacteria is all contaminated with mold. And then they're like, well, wait, what? The bacteria is not growing near the mold. And it's like, oh, well, what's that? And that was penicillin. Inhibited bacterial growth. Because similar to, uh, eh. So a lot of our antibiotics come from fungus 
and bacteria, but they also come from plants because plants have to be able to defend themselves against pathogens just like we do. Um, and so a lot of things happen by accident. Um, the reason that there's petri dishes was by a grad student like me. His uh, last name was Petri, and he was trying to figure out a way to grow bacteria in the lab for study. And so he was making little dishes and stuff that worked really well. And his advisor was also working on it. Yeah, he's trying so hard. I know, he wants to be my friend so bad, but I can't, I can't sing right now. But I only got one song in me, one song at a time. I know, I'm sorry. I would, I would, I can't sing, I would. Man, I'm just so bad. I'm just so bad at this, I feel so bad. Excuse me, bud. I'm just, I'm just after some food. I'm after some food and I'm after some stuff. And you're like in my way all the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Joseph Petrie, I'm pretty sure his last, first name was Joseph, came up with the idea of the dish. Okay, come on, bud. Let's go. Run, those guys do not look friendly. Um, and his advisor was trying to figure out ways to grow bacteria in the lab and he had been um, just trying to grow them on potatoes he'd been trying to grow them in different liquids and stuff and his wife was making jelly and homemade jam and she came up with the idea of putting pectin into the media so it was like chicken blood or chicken broth or like you know, different stuff like that, and I threw my stick for no reason. And so that is how we make bacterial media now. It's basically like a type of, um, I would say, fortified jello. <laughs> and so that all happened sort of by accident, and just people sort of goofing off and trying to figure it out. I mean... I grow, when I want to grow my plants in a sterile environment, I put them in baby food jars and I put the lid on top and in there I have jello, basically. Um, and so the, uh, okay, why do I keep throwing my stick? Ugh. All right, I will wait here. And I will sing to you in just a second. Because I've almost got it. <laughs> it's got the cool down. Cool down on my dumb song. Okay, come on. There we go. Okay, bud. Yes, we will sing again. We will sing together. Are we going to be great friends now? Or are you wanting me to do something different? I don't understand. I don't understand what you want from me. <laughs> oh no. Oh, what's your clip? I love all the weird history. Yeah, there's a lot of weird history. Oh, what do you want to know about your very own Harriet? Yeah, my Harriet, she's having even more puppies than she did before. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm basically just like spreading Harriet's across the globe and eventually she will take over. It's gonna be great. What kind of thing is she? What soil does she like? <laughs> okay, so Harriet is a zebra hayorthia. Um, it's a hayorthia uh, fasciata, I think. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but that's the species that I figured out. Um, Harriet basically likes, I've just been using just regular old potting soil. Um, only needs to be watered about once a week and I put her in a nice sunny window and that's it. I mean, the, one of the reasons I love Harriet is Harriet needs very little, <laughs> very little to, um, 
for like basically anything, you know. Man, I do not have enough money. I don't understand how do I do money. I have forgotten completely. Too expensive, too expensive. Oh no. I have no charm. I have no charm because I have no money. I tried to Google my very own Harriet. It didn't come up with much. Yes. No, Harriet doesn't need much. Harriet is um, very easy uh, to deal with. Um, it's actually one of the most popular house plants. Uh, and the reason for that is because needs very little. Um, so, well, I think that's mostly what I wanted to talk about today. I don't know if I've got anything else to come up with. Does anyone else have any other questions? I'm like not paying attention and not learning how to play a <laughs> forgot how to play score. Uh, man, Herbie, I'm super bad at this. I need to get more stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was probably just some fungus. Um, I've noticed pretty commonly uh, if the soil starts to grow some sort of orangey fungus, it's kind of the stuff that just came off of your skin, like dust and stuff. It shouldn't bother her at all. Yeah, normally the fuzzy soil won't bother them too much, but... Yeah, as long as you don't have it too wet, just have it well drained. So if you've got them in a pot that's got holes in the bottom. And just only a little bit of water once a week and that's about it. And then they're super happy. You know, they don't don't really need much. White fuzz. Yeah, that's kind of the bread mold stuff. Mildew. Yeah, as I said, not a... In, unless you're getting uh, stuff on the leaves... It shouldn't be a problem, but you know, it that fuzz will steal nutrients from Harriet. Won't hurt Harriet directly, but it will steal stuff from Harriet, so. Yes, Cookie. Wrong chat window. <laughs> Never mind. Cookie will wish. We won't we won't know the wish. That's fine. Okay, come on. Ugh. There we go. I sing? I sing. Do we become great friends? Because I sing. Gotcha. Yep. Well, the thing to remember about Harriet, she's actually a succulent, so she kind of likes it a bit drier. Um, they're from a more arid region. It's more arid and cool. Um, so... That's why you uh, don't need, don't need much. All right, does this give me money or just give me stuff? Okay, how do I get money again? Yeah. Yeah, Harriet, uh, my, uh, Yeah, my, my one older cat always loses his, you know, ab goes absolutely bonkers for uh, plants. And he's eating leaves and stuff off of Harriet, and Harriet just tends to ignore him. <laughs> As it should be. Meet other species. Meet other species and click on them. Okay, I click on them. Okay, is this what I've been doing wrong the whole time? Okay. Okay. All 
not right. I'm like, what have I been doing wrong? Okay. Yeah, not a ton of heat. As I said, a sunny window, but not like, you know, not, not burning. Don't need any burning. But as I said, most of the time, just like, just leave her alone. And let her do the thing. It'll be good. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. It's one of the reasons I like giving Har Harriet clones away. Okay, you get money by making friends and collecting shiny DNA. All right, now I got it. It's only been like <laughs> eight years since I played this game. I'm fine. I'm not an idiot. See, this is what you get, everybody. <laughs> Come a PhD. <laughs> Look at all his education. Can't figure out this dumb game. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I know. I like her because she's so hardy. All right. Ooh, yes. Well, I will say my one advisor is pretty great. Um, because, uh, she, uh, she always says that if you're, um, That if you can't laugh at yourself, you're missing out on the biggest joke. <laughs> and I could not agree more. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can we be friends? Can you can you like me? Yeah. Yes, we're not great friends. Hooray! Huzzah! Yay! Cool. All right, off we go. Oh yeah, you can't if if you can't laugh at yourself, you're missing the world's greatest joke. Yes, that line is so flipping good. Hello. Hello. Oh, I can't do that. I know, that's not what you wanted. I think I'm gonna mess it up, guys. I can only sing. Sorry. Maybe my siren song will do it. Oh, they did like the siren song. Okay, well, maybe they won't attack me while I go pick some stuff. Yeah, I think I need charm and dancing too. Well, I needed more money. Maybe I'll have enough money now. Cause, cause I was just, uh, was just walking around eating and not paying attention. I get distracted. I get distracted because I, I like talking. Yeah, if there's anything I can do, I can talk. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Christmas. Everyone have some nice... Steals the DNA, yes. Actually, there are some literal DNA thieves in nature. Um, the, uh, the microbe I, I study is a DNA thief. Yes, hello. Hello, buddy.
Yeah, not traveling anywhere. Yeah, I am traveling, actually. But I am going to Florida to see my in-laws, which is great. Um, I only get to see them a couple times a year, although I did go to a conference down in Florida about a month ago, so I got bonus time, so that was nice. Oh, what did they do with that stolen DNA? Um, they... So, it kind of happened by accident. They, um... Agrobacterium that I study um, transfers DNA into its host to engineer its host into its own personal, like, grocery store. But it also will trade DNA with other bacteria, and that's called horizontal gene transfer. And so that will usually, that's one of the reasons antibiotic resistance um, gets spread from bacteria to bacteria is that they steal each other's DNA <laughs> um, and will steal different traits which are um, let's see plus health, pose aggressiveness so they will steal each other's DNA and that allows them to live in different environments. For example, if you're in a body that is under antibiotics. I know, it's pretty great. Not. Um, at least for us anyway. Good for them, because it allows them to, you know, uh, live and survive and all that other stuff. Not so great for us because then we get sick. Um, so, but yeah, there are there are plenty of DNA thieves. Um, I don't know if anyone else is. Yeah, that's cheating. It really is cheating. <laughs> Horizontal gene transfer is basically bacteria sex, and it does feel like cheating. Um, also, if a bacteria dies and sort of explodes. Um, bacteria can eat that DNA as a source of nitrogen and phosphorus, but they can also integrate that DNA into their genome, which is not great. Not great. Mm -mm. So, yeah, it is basically cheating. So that's one of the reasons we're, we'll call, um, it's normally referred to as an evolutionary arms race. So, an arms race. Glide. Glide sprint. Hmm. Snick. Charm. 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 <laughs> so basically, an evolutionary arms race is that Usually, whoever is the most aggressive is the one that's going to have the advantage. Advantage goes to the offense. And, like, eyes on your own paper. No copying from that smart kid. Yeah. Don't, don't you look at that smart kid over there. Don't you see what they're doing. Don't do it. Ooh, I get better sing. Oh no, I can't afford it. Oh no, darn. Well, we'll have to go with our usual mouth. But yeah, the other thing I don't know if you guys are, um, Weird Theory a while back said some of our traits Yes, so there are some traits and there's a good, there's actually a large part of our genome that is made up of viral DNA, viral elements from ancient viruses that just no longer work anymore. So they're basically like just extra. And so a lot of our repetitive DNA is actually made up of viral DNA that inserted into our genome like millions of years ago and then got copied and copied and copied, but it can no, like viruses after they, in, it's called a retrovirus is the term. 
Um, and after they insert into your genome, they have to escape, be put back into particles and get released from your cells. But they lost the ability to do that. So now they just keep, just get replicated into our genome just over and over, but they're just stuck there now. So it's like a dead end for them. So from what we can tell, our size of our genome has been pretty stable for a, very, for a long time, as, uh, as far as we think, at least for humans and primates. Um, so because of that, oh, okay. I don't know if I want to charge, but all right. Rawr. Um, so because of that, there's, um, you will find that the amount of repetitive DNA in a organism tends to go with the, would say, advancement of the organism. So humans have a lot of repetitive DNA and that the size of the genome doesn't necessarily mean um, complexity. So um, this is another sort of fun history lesson um, is that when the Human Genome Project was put together and the idea for the Human Genome Project um, was that we would sequence the entire human genome and our genome would be the biggest, was the thought. That the size of our genome would would be the largest of what we sequenced. And the thing is, is that um, ours is like not even close. <laughs> We're pretty middling. Um, for when it comes to being a <coughs> mammal. And mammals are also pretty minimal, middling when it comes to sort of animals. Um, the largest genomes are, um, are plant genomes by orders of magnitude. It's one of the reasons that I got into plant genetics and the plant field is that their genetics and DNA is way, 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 is very complicated and um, much more so than ours are. Um, there's also sort of a misnomer that humans were the first things we sequenced. That isn't also true. The first things we sequenced were viruses, which isn't that surprising because viruses have the smallest genomes. Oh no, no, please don't hurt me. Yes, no aggression. We are all going to be great friends. Yes, we are great friends. Yes, we are great friends. Can we be good friends? Yes. We will all be great friends. No one should be angry with me. Oh no. Yeah, they do look weird. Please don't hurt me. Can we be great friends? Yes? Yes, we could be great friends. Yeah, so a large part, um, so for a long time our, only about 2% of our genome actually becomes protein. And for a long time, everyone thought that the rest of it was just junk. <laughs> like it didn't do anything. And we found out that, yeah, it actually does a whole lot. Um, we just don't understand what most of it does. <laughs> Welcome to being human. You're wrong most of the time. And nature is like, ah, you think you know stuff.
Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we will be great friends someday, I promise. Oh, three different dudes in the group. Okay. I see. Maybe I try that then. Man, I want a better singing voice. I didn't have enough money to do it earlier. You may have to come back later do the rest. Yeah, so the sort of ancient viral DNA actually um, is used to help us figure out how closely related we are to other mammals and other primates. Um, because there are certain um, repetitive DNA elements which are present in only certain elements and not in others. Whoa! Okay. Hello, freaky. <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh, I didn't get dense because I suck. I thought I did, but I didn't. Darn it. Well, that's scary. Oh, my little guy is hungry. Oh, no. Ah. I'm running. I'm going. I'm sorry, buddy. No, oh, please don't hurt me. All right, there we go. Man, we're still getting some weird things happening, clipping out. Ooh, that's annoying. All right, that's better. We're better. Everything is good now. Uh, any other questions we've got about genome evolution? That's always fun. All right. I sang. Is the big bad scary over there? See if we can become friends real quick before we have to go die by this thing that's gonna try to eat us. He killed me! He killed him! Oh my goodness. Hmm. Should we take him on, guys? Yeah, no, genetics is hard. I got a I got a bachelor's degree in genetics. It's intense. Not gonna lie. Now I'm now I'm a gene jockey. Man, this guy is mean. You know what? I get you. No, don't eat my friend. Well, I better run. You're going to kill us all. Yes, 
there are tiny changes that can make a huge amount of difference. I mean... I know he's killing all my friends, but I don't know what to do. It won't let me charge. Where'd he go? Is he still over here? Hmm. Should we make him pay for what he has done? This may be real stupid. Probably is stupid. Holy shit! <laughs> no, no! Don't pay attention to me, dinosaur. Okay, he's leaving. All right. Oh, he killed me immediately. Wow, that was fast. You were killed in battle. One hit and I died. See, this is what happens. I tried to get revenge and it went so bad. Oh no. Oh no. Wow. <laughs> Hey everyone, how not to play Spore and get killed. Yeah, that was harsh. <laughs> Just immediately, death. <laughs> it's like, well, look at me, trying to be useful. Too bad I suck. I think we need more allies or something. Oh, look, his eyes are so freaking big. I love it. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, I think I've got to stop this stream here. Does anyone else have any fun questions or comments? I'd stay longer, but I got to pack because I'm leaving for Florida tomorrow. <laughs> it might be a good idea to pack. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, buddy, hang on. No, yeah, thanks for coming. Um, probably won't see you all till the new year, till do another one, but, yep. Um, Bilbo's at my parents' house right now, I'm getting spoiled by my mom, but I know he gets hugs from mom every day, so I will definitely do that. Um, so thanks for coming. Thanks a bunch, everybody. And I will see you in the new year. Um, have a great time. And take care of yourselves, okay?